Hey, hello. Welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to see about two more properties of water. So in the previous video, we have discussed about the adhesion and cohesion property of water and as well as the high latent heat of vaporization. So now, let us move on to the uh, next property of water. So it is the high melting and boiling point of water. So we know the melting and boiling point of water, right? So it is around, so the melting point is around 0 degree Celsius, which we can write as 32 degree Fahrenheit. So I am writing it in Fahrenheit. And we know the boiling point is around 100 degree Celsius, right? Now, why we are telling this as high melting and high boiling point? Right? Now, first let us consider the melting point. We say high melting point of water. So, melting point is nothing but the temperature at which the ice melts. Right? So, at 0 degree Celsius, the ice is getting melted. That is, it is converting to water. Right? Now, this 0 degree Celsius, when you are considering it in Fahrenheit, it is around 32 degree Fahrenheit. Okay? Which is comparatively a high temperature. Okay, so that's why we are telling that it is a high melting point. Now, when it comes to boiling point of water, it is around 100 degrees Celsius. Already we have discussed about this, right? Now, the reason we are telling it as high melting point is that one is it is around 32 degree Fahrenheit when it comes to melting point and it is 100 degrees Celsius when it comes to boiling point. Again, the reason for this is nothing but the presence of hydrogen bonding which makes very tough to break that hydrogen bonding to convert to one state to another state. Now for example melting point you take an ice cube and when you are heating that ice cube it take around 32 degree Fahrenheit once if it is reaching the 32 degree Fahrenheit alone the ice will be melting in that case the hydrogen bond bonding is breaking in this particular temperature alone and it is converting from ice to water. Now when you are taking boiling point, the liquid water when it starts boiling only at 100 degrees Celsius it starts boiling and only at this particular temperature the hydrogen bond among the water molecules is getting broken and that is why we are saying it is having high melting and high boiling point. So this is the first property. The second property is water is considered as a universal solvent, right? Uh, so why it is considered as universal solvent? So first, let us understand what is a solution. When a solute is mixed with a solvent, you get a solution. Now, water is considered as a universal solvent. The reason is that this water can dissolve most of the chemicals present in the world. We cannot say all the chemicals present in the world. Most of the chemicals present in the world can be dissolved in water. Now, what is the reason for this? Okay, The reason water can dissolve most of the chemicals in the world, it is because of the polarity present in the water molecule. We know that, now let us take the uh, water molecule. We know it is having uh, one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms in it, right? Now, we know it is having partial negative and it is having partial positive charge on it. That is, hydrogen is having partial positive and oxygen is having partial negative. So, there forms a pole, right? Now, this polarity makes the water to act as a universal solvent. So, whenever you are dissolving some uh, chemicals in water, easily the opposite charges attract towards each other and the particular substance is getting dissolved in the water. For example, if you take uh, NaCl, sodium chloride. So, in this case, what is happening? It is dissociating into Na plus Cl minus and Na plus is moving towards oxygen and Cl minus is moving towards hydrogen. So this is the reason where most of the 
polar chemicals or you can call it as polar compounds will be easily mixed up with water now if you take some of the chemicals will not be able to dissolve in water right say for example oil when you add oil to water what is happening the oil will be floating on the water what is the reason why oil alone is not getting dissolved in water this is because you we, you we need to know the chemical composition of oil first of all so generally the oil in the sense the cooking oil or uh, the hair oil which we use right so this oil consists of large chain of hydrocarbons in it that is both carbon and hydrogen atoms are present and it is a large macromolecular uh, compound fine now in this case this oil doesn't contain any polarity in it okay that, that this oil does not have any charges on it so it does not have any polarity so like uh, in this case if you take sodium chloride this can dissociate at na plus and cl minus but in this case when you are taking oil it does not have any polar compounds in it that is like po partial positive or partial negative or simply positive or negative it doesn't have anything such that it cannot dissolve in the water so that is a reason why we consider water as a universal solvent yeah the third one is specific heat capacity okay now let us see what is this specific heat capacity first so this specific heat capacity is very high in case of water right now what is the specific heat capacity first let us understand this so the specific heat capacity is nothing but energy required the heat energy required to increase a liquid at room temperature and at atmospheric pressure to 1 degree celsius okay so in a simple way heat required to raise a liquid which is at room temperature and one atmospheric pressure to 1 degree celsius right so this is the definition of heat you are having some liquid in your home and uh that liquid will be having some temperature like uh, say it is in, in around uh, uh, 30 to 40 degrees celsius just imagine okay now you need to raise the temperature of the liquid by 1 degree okay so you need some energy to raise the temperature okay that energy we call it as specific heat capacity okay so this is the specific heat capacity of water which is quite large okay which is very high okay and again the reason for this is again the presence of hydrogen bonding which makes it difficult to easily break this okay so that is a reason why we are saying the specific heat capacity of water is very high due to the presence of hydrogen bonding again so if you keenly observe uh, whatever the pro properties we have seen at last the reason is this guy that is the hydrogen bonding so this hydrogen bonding plays a vital role in water and its properties which gives the uniqueness to the water so when you take adhesion and cohesion again there is the presence of hydrogen bonding over there and when you are taking latent heat of vaporization the presence of hydrogen bonding and when you are speaking about the specific heat capacity again it is the presence of hydrogen bonding when we are speaking about melting point and boiling point again it is hydrogen bonding so this hydrogen bonding plays a key role in giving the unique properties of water